you don't have a lot of time. And the reason why our time is so important is because the things that we do here really matter. You will exist for eternity. You're going to be around forever. And especially being a child of God, hey, you're going to be in God's kingdom. You're going to be with the Lord. You're going to, you know, it's going to be great just being with God forever. No doubt. But this life really matters. And, and once you're done with this life, you know, all you have left is then you're going to face the judgment seat of Christ where you're either going to receive rewards or receive nothing based on what you did with your time on this earth. And if you use your time doing nothing, you're going to get nothing. What you put in, you're going to get, you get nothing back. And, and you know what? That lasts forever. That, that, there's no do-overs. There's no going back. God's not going to reincarnate you, right? And give you another chance at this life because, well, you wasted your time the first time and then you died. So I'm going to send you back and then you get to go do the whole thing over again. That doesn't, that doesn't work. That's not the way God operates. You have one chance in this life to make good choices, to do the right thing. And you don't know how much time you have. You don't know what God's plan is for you. And honestly, if you start making all, like a lot of wrong choices, you can cause your life to end before God intended your life to end because you didn't choose to do what he wanted you to do. Right. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 6. The Bible says, Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. So this is talking about not being deceived by vain words. God's wrath comes upon people who choose to live in the flesh, who choose to, to do things after the lust of the flesh. God's wrath is on those people. That's because earlier in the chapter, let me just turn there real quick myself. It's talking about people who... Uh, you know, it gives a whole list of people who don't inherit the, the kingdom of God. And um, let's just start reading in verse number one. The Bible reads, Be therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling sa savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become as saints, Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. And we see similar passages to this one in other places in the Bible, in 1 Corinthians, and in other places where we're... He's saying, hey, no adulterers, no whoremongers, no, you know, and, and it lists off a bunch of sins um, are going to be in the kingdom of, of heaven. And people will use these verses to try to justify a works-based salvation, seeing, see, you have to, if you have any of these sins in your life, you can't be. No, because the Bible says, but ye are washed, but ye are justified. In other places, you know, explaining that while you may have committed these sins because you're in Christ, all of those sins are washed away. So, you know, God doesn't look at you as that adulterer when you're entering into heaven because he looks and sees what Jesus did for you, not all of your sins. But the point that's being made here is that, hey, there are people going to hell for all these reasons. And you would have too if you didn't receive forgiveness through Jesus Christ. But the wrath of God is going to be poured out on people because they committed all these things and they didn't have Christ. So don't be partakers with them. With these, if God's wrath is on these people for all these things, then you ought not to be involved with all of these things. You should be keeping yourself from this stuff. Foolish talking, jesting, it says, you know, whoremongers, unclean, covetous, idolaters. You go through all of these different sins. And then it says in verse number six, let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Why? Because all these people doing these things are disobedient. They're, they're, they're disobeying God's laws. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Don't, don't be doing the same things. Verse number eight. 
For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. So instead of communing with, having fellowship with, all, you know, putting, inserting yourself and being around this whole situation where people are committing all these types of sins and just, and just being right there along with them and, and going off and getting into sin like that. He's saying, don't have fellowship with that, but rather reprove them. You take the opposite stance and say, no, that's wrong. No, I'm not going to do that. No, I'm not going to be involved with those things. For it is a shame, verse number 12, to even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things are that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake, thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. And this is going back to the original point of the sermon. Redeem your time wisely. Don't be like a fool. Now, this is referring to sin. If you are using your time to do sinful things, you're like a fool. Okay, you're acting just like a fool. And the Bible is saying, hey, wake up. Awake, thou that sleepest. Walk in the light. Don't have any business walking in the darkness and, and fellowshipping with, all the, you know, with these people who God's going to pour out his wrath on. Because they're unsaved, because they're just living in the flesh, they can't even walk in the Spirit. You have the Spirit of God. God has given you light. Walk in that light. Reprove the wicked works of darkness and do what's right. Walk circumspectly. 